Hey man, salt from seawater. Salt from seawater. Yeah, there we go. Uh, you know we're uh, we're big on salt here. Uh, actually, we're not here. Actually, we're there, and I'll tell you about that in a minute. But uh, we're big on salt. If there ever was like a true grid down scenario, you know, extended SHTF global reset, salt is salt is the most essential thing to to civilization almost. In order to not be a hunter gatherer, you got to have salt, and it's one of the things we may be least prepared to produce on our own uh, anymore. So we're always big on salt. We like to, to stockpile it, but uh, we've got another option here today and that is making salt from seawater. So also if you follow us, you know we don't live anywhere near the sea, so uh, who are we going to get seawater? Well today we get it from our beautiful sister-in-law. This is my youngest brother's wife. We are all together up in Virginia in Shenandoah Valley, uh, which if there's any place blessed by God, it is the Shenandoah Valley for my third brother's wedding. So we're getting another sister-in-law. So this is the last brother to get married. You guys, this brother, Josiah, you've, you've interacted with him on the channel some. He's been in the comments and whatnot. Uh, so we're all together up here for his wedding. This beauty lives on the sea and she brought us some some seawater so we can try to make salt out of it, which she has already done. Once? Yes. <laughs> all right, so what we got? We got, we got seawater, right? Yes. How many gallons? Uh, we started with two, but we, we started already with started. Two. Now, now this is actually where we're going to end up, right? Yes. And this was how much seawater? Uh, I started out with two and a half gallons, but uh, we've actually been using some of the salt over this weekend. So, um, but we ended up with about a cup when we finished. So we got a, about a cup of sea salt out of two and a half gallons of seawater, which actually is not an insignificant amount of salt. Remember, in a uh, historically, salt at times has has traded ounce for ounce for gold. It's literally worth its weight in gold at certain points in history. So imagine that much gold. Actually, it wouldn't feel that much, but you know, that, that weight of gold, that's a significant sum of uh, money uh, or value there in that salt. So what you did, tell me what you did. Okay, so first I gathered the seawater, of course, just in these Got gallon jugs. And then um, I strained it through um, a cloth into um, And we're straining it because? Um, well, the water that I got this time, um, it was, um, I got it from the Chesapeake Bay, but it was, um, there were still kind of waves, and you can see that there's some sediment in the bottom and some sand. We got some sand. Um, there was less the first time I got it because I got it from a more still area, but even still, you want to strain it out to make sure you're getting out. The, so she's just straining it yeah. to get and the, the... the boiling process will kill anything that's in it, but um, you want to try, at least try, if you're going to try this, to try to get the water from a uh, less polluted area if possible. Uh, you're going to Yay! Oh, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Daddy made a mess. That's what I'm good at. So... Um, but then you just pretty much boil it and boil it and boil it until you get salt. Um, it'll eventually look like just some wet sand. Um, and at that point, you might want to take it off direct heat and you can either sit it um, in a pan for several days and just stir it from time to time. Or if you want to speed it up, you can bake it in the oven at low heat. I baked it at about 100 degrees for several hours and um, ended up with that eventually. Um, I should have stirred it a little bit more often. You can kind of see it's a little bit chunky. If I had stirred it more often, it might have been a little finer, but... It's salt. Daddy likey salt. <laughs> so right now we're boiling this. How many hours did it take to boil? Um, I feel like the first time I did it, it might have been between six and eight. I didn't keep the best track. I did it over the course of two evenings. All right, so we're boiling this. We've already wrecked one pan. We've got it over the grill here at our uh, beautiful cabin. This is supposedly rustic camping, I think, maybe. I'm not sure. It's certainly nicer than we normally live. Glamping, so, I suppose. Yeah, this is glam we're glamping. So we're going to leave that on the fire for a while, and we'll check back on it in, in a bit. All right. It's been about an hour and 45 minutes, so we're going to check on it. Are we? Yeah, we are. Now we're getting there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Be see how it's looking kind of cloudy. Eventually, it'll start to look like wet sand, and that's when you can pull it off and start to bake it. Alright, so I thought this wedding was going to be a uh, casual affair, but she's going to make me up my game. You can see, bow tie. You think that's something though, check this out. <laughs> oh, mama. Alright, so we're back on the homestead. It's been a while. I don't remember what day we shot the first part of this clip, but uh, 
we got it boiled down to, to two quarts, or at least it filled this two quart stew pan. And uh, we're going to finish it off here at the house on the grill. And where's my redneck pot holder? I don't know, it's boiling water right now. I don't know what I'm showing you, but what the heck. There you go, boiling water. We're going to cook dinner while we're at it. All right, there you go, man. I think we're about there. Uh, I don't know how long that took. It wasn't very long at all. Uh, we probably lost a lot of salt to bubbling over, but I don't know how much. We'll. Uh, I'm going to pull it off the fire right now. Excuse my redneck pot holder. And we'll let it cool down and we'll scrape it up and see what we got. I'd in, be interested to know how the smoke, you know, because it was it was over over hardwood smoke. I'll be interested to see how that smoke affects the flavor. And uh, we'll work it up and, and see what it looks like when we're done. Alright, it's cooled down a little bit. Let's see if I can do this one-handed. We're going to try to scrape this off. I don't know how much of this is showing. Remember, Amy said it was like a wet sand, and that's really kind of what it's like. Uh, apparently, I need to work on this a little bit off camera. And we'll see what we can work this down into. All right, man. So, what's the conclusion of the matter? Uh, We've been working on this for a week, I think over a week. It seems like uh, when we started, uh, it, it was probably on a Friday. Saturday. It may have been on a Saturday. Mariah says it was Saturday. So we've actually had it dried out a couple times, and our horrific Georgia humidity keeps uh, uh, just making it damp again, like like damp sand. Uh, but we've, we've had it dried out. We finished it out on the grill. So it has a smoky flavor to it, believe it or not. It actually tastes pretty good. Uh, but you can kind of taste the smoke in there. It might be in my head, though, so I don't know. And we, we finished it off in a cast iron pan. So it's got a gray color to it. Let's see if we can get a... Is that showing the... Looks like dirt. Looks like dirt. Well, it's salt, but it's gray salt. It's damp right now. You can see it's it's all clumped up. And I think that's what all salt looks like here in the summer. It's just normally in the salt shaker. Except obviously it's not gray. Uh, maybe I don't know. It. I was shocked at how uh, I had it completely dry, and then uh, I came back to it uh, two different times, and it was. It looked like someone had dumped water in it. I was going to get mad at one of the kids. Uh, so that leads me to believe two things. First off, obviously up here in the mountains, there's not a lot of salt water for us to see water water for us to to boil down anyway. It seems like this is a winter uh, endeavor. You know, when you're, you're you're heating anyway, we couldn't do this in the house here during the summer. Obviously, on the stove, it'd be too hot. Uh, the problem with doing it outside on the grill was that it was very hard to regulate the temperature, and the water would start boiling over. And we actually lost a lot of salt probably to the water boiling out of the pot down onto the fire. Uh, you could see the salt, you know, on the grill and on the uh, uh, charcoal. We should have shown that. Underneath, you know, once you got the fire put out to try to save the charcoal, you could see salt stains on the charcoal and on the grill. Uh, so it was, it, it boiled really quick on the grill, but it was like, it would have to have been in a much bigger container to, to control all the boiling. And then obviously you're using cast iron, I think is why we got that gray color. But kind of fun, you know, producing salt is one of those things that would be very difficult to do. Uh, obviously it was not something we could do here because we don't have access to the sea. But in a true grid-down scenario, you know, there's a cottage industry for you people on the coast. You can produce salt for the rest of us. We want to thank our, uh, our beautiful sister-in-law for, for bringing us the seawater and doing this with us. To my brother for letting her be uh, a part of the project. And, of course, for all you guys, we appreciate you. Take it easy, man.